I'm Rick Jacket. I play guitar in Finger Eleven, and you're watching Pure Grain Audio. I mean, okay, well, what's normal to me might be to extreme someone else, but to me, before we play a show, I'm that guy who goes to the back lounge and I make it all look like a dazed and confusing and, and basically just crank whatever I'm like, little clutch or like, you know, monster magnet or whatever I'm listening to at the time. But the most extreme thing I do is probably have like a quadruple vodka and Red Bull before I go on stage. I don't drink up until the one hour prior to, and then I basically just chug a Mickey vodka and Red Bull. And that's probably the most extreme thing I can think of. Okay, you know what? I was just going to say, we played a show out in Philly where we actually played on the uh, on an aircraft carrier, a retired aircraft carrier, and we played on the helicopter copter uh, pad you know they set up a stage and there was about I think 500 winners there and it was called like rock the boat or something and it was awesome we were out there in the middle of the water and the coolest thing was that we ended up being buddies with the cure because it's a, it's a museum so we ended up being friends with the curator and he traded us a visit on our tour bus for an entire backstage like or a back behind the scenes tour of the uh of the, of, it was it was a it was a aircraft carrier and it was so we ended up drink, drinking Jack Daniels bottle and Jack Daniels in the captain's quarters, like you know the one that even the tourists don't get to go to. We're sitting there, we're like, this is the coolest thing, and it was cool. The neatest thing I learned about that is that the, uh, you know, like the the missile room that's all red, well, it's actually blue because they found eventually that red's a really angry in color and it's, it's it really creates tension, you know. So they found blue is a much more calming color. So you go in that room and it's it's weird, it's all blue and it's pretty scary though to think what what the power of the hands, you know. Uh, you know what, when our, on the making of our Life Turns Electric re record, we were in Manhattan for the making of that record, and uh, me and Rich, our old drummer, decided we were going to drink uh, Blowfish Sake, which we saw these, like we were in this real authentic sushi place, and we saw, or it was more like a Japanese restaurant, we saw like the people around us, they were all drinking, they were drinking it, like no problem, and we were just like, oh, this will be hilarious, like we'll get this, you know, this novelty, and we couldn't even, I couldn't even finish that much, it tasted like rotten fish alcohol like it was pretty it was pretty disgusting so it's not necessarily a food but it was one of the grossest things i've ever i've ever tried it was extreme and i i failed that one miserably <laughs> i mean the extreme the most extreme as far as like the greatest ever biggest band we could possibly tour with we, we, we did a cross country with ozzy and at that time his band was consisted of mike Morlin from faith no more Jason Newstead was on that one tour because that was when they sort of swapped bass players, um, and Zach Wild and Ozzy Osbourne. So it was like that's about as extreme as it gets when it comes to like iconic musicians, you know. And that that was one of the coolest tours ever. We were launching our Finger Eleven record. It was the middle of summer. We had like 16 dates. We were the only. We were the main. It was Voivod, us, and Ozzy. And it was like rock and roll summer camp. Like it was the coolest thing in the world. Like one of the neatest things was actually to see Zach Wild pull in with the Hells Angels following him at like noon. They'd crack at the picnic tables, they'd crack at the Jack Daniels, and there'd be like pit bull. It was like, I feel like if I wasn't seeing this with my own eyes, I would be like, I'm not, I wouldn't believe this is actually how he is. And it was actually how he was, you know? But the nicest people, like everybody was so kind. They treated us great. It was, it was so it wasn't extreme in that sense of like, there was like just, but it was extreme as far as like the amount of talent on stage. Well, this is an extreme, but I am extremely into this hobby. Is uh, I, I'm a, I collect vintage toys, vintage, vintage like the 70s and 80s, mostly Star Wars, GI Joe, He Man, all that world. I'm, the, I'm. That's like that. Okay, and then probably if you consider a video game a hobby, which pff, most people do, I consider it like a sport. You know, but there's a game called Dota 2 that definitely wins the most extreme amount of my time because I've logged. I'm at about. 3,500 hours played. So that's pretty extreme. I woke up on a wharf once. I did. I woke up on a wharf in uh, Atlantic City once. And uh, I also woke up in um, the middle of uh, Times Square once on a bench. So those are probably those two. <laughs> I don't know how long I was sleeping there, but that's where I woke up. So. I just recently bought 
a goat skull for my wife. <laughs> when, when I was down in the States at a flea market, they were selling goat skulls, and I bought one of those and brought it home. And so that's sort of extreme, I guess. <laughs> Back before 9-11, way back when the rules were way lax, and we were in, it was 97, and we were first ever went to America to get signed, and we signed our contract with Wind Up Records, and we were like over the moon. It was just before Christmas time. We got, so we f were to fly out, the, the plane got let, grounded, it got snowed, and then it got to the point where it was the last flight out of LaGuardia, and you know, like no more flights. So we had no tour manager at the time, we were just a bunch of kids. We did like the worst thing you could imagine is like we called a bar and said like, hey, how late are you guys open? Because we knew we had to be back at the airport for like 6.30 in the morning. So we went to a bar and we drank until they kicked us out, which was around 5 o'clock in the morning. And then we milled around and we actually went into the airport and drank what we had bought as for duty free to take home with us. We started drinking that in the airport, like just <laughs> with a can of Pepsi, you know. And so we ended up. I don't know how we. Had, I lost my ticket. We didn't. We ended up getting through, getting our tickets, getting through security, and we ended up. And sort of mind you, this is just me and James, the other guitarist. The other guys ended up crashing like in like a like a sort of like a little hotel one room thing. We this is our plan. So we end up getting in there, and the next morning the guys came there, and we were laying like in the middle of the, the airport, like laid out. Our clothes were all like thrown. There was an empty bottle of booze beside us. And like, they didn't kick us out. I don't know why. I don't know why. To this day, I, I can't believe that that was like acceptable behavior in an airport, but it was. And we just, they woke us up like by kicking us, saying, hey, plane's boarding. And we just got on the plane. And so that was definitely the most extreme air airport uh, <laughs> experience I've ever had. And we were in line with Ivana Trump and Mickey Rooney, which was even the weirdest part. We were just all days. And that was a strange one. That was a very strange one. <laughs> Most extreme.